So here's a finale document, and it has in it embedded all sorts of Roman numeral stuff that you can use. So um, I'm going to give it to you. It's going to be a blank doc, but I've, I wanted to show you how to use it. Um, so here's like a, a, a little thing, four-part harmony. You can use this in any type of doc. Uh, if you had just a single melody and you wanted to do analysis, but I've done it with four part here. Um, and I've done some important stuff beforehand if you wanted to use this doc. Um, what I did is uh, I, I decided that it, so often Finale plays back the chords wrong. So in Score Manager, uh, in terms of the sound playback, um, I've turned off the chords right here uh, so that they're not going to play back because they play back wrong and we don't want to hear that. We want to hear what you wrote. So uh, if I just play this for you, you'll hear... So uh, this has obviously some Harmony 3 stuff going on here. We have uh, um, some sub fives and things like that. So the thing is now how in Finale can I do Roman numeral analysis? Now first of all, when I put all these chords in, I use the chord tool. So it's tied to each one of these. If you see, I click on it's tied. So if I move a note, it's going to end up moving the chords with it if I change the, uh, the layout. So now I've changed my layout and you notice that the chords are staying with. Uh, you know it's a simple thing for a layout. A lot of you don't seem to uh, know about that the arrow is on the right side of your keyboard. If you push the, if you just select a measure and if I push up here then it's going to push it up. Really 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 easy kind of stuff. So anyhow, uh, so now I want to show you how to do Roman numeral analysis. Um, so here is the expression tool, the thing that says mezzo forte, it's the expression tool. And I'm going to click on this and then I'm going to cl click right here and a box will open up to show all these different uh, Roman numerals that I've done. See all these? So it has a whole bunch. Here's all the different things. There's all sorts of expressions here and rehearsal letters and stuff. But the big one, the big one that I've done for you is I've provided every single kind of Roman numeral that's possible. All right. So, and I've had versions of dominant chords, and then those same dominants when they're deceptive. I have all the here's all the major uh, chords. Uh, here's in minor keys all the different ones that we have. Um, we also have secondary dominants, and we have the secondary dominants when it's a deceptive cadence. Um, we also have sub fives and their versions when they're deceptive. Uh, we also have blues chords. Um, we also have brackets and arrows, and we have dotted arrows and dotted brackets, um, and then some stuff that you'll use, like showing a chromatic modulation. We'll have that uh, later in contiguous. Uh, here's just some parentheses in case there's anything I have, haven't included. So uh, this first chord is a one major seven, so I'm going to go ahead and pick that, um, and then all I do is, is I hit assign. And then there it is, and then you can just move it into place to where you want to have it, one major seven. Cool. Um, now I have a two five here going here. This also has dual functions, so I can click on this, um, and that's a seven minor seven flat five. So I'm going to go look in here. Okay, there it is. Double click, and now it's in position, and I can just make sure it looks nice. And here's my five seven of six. So I'm going to scroll down here until I see five seven of six, and uh, here's five seven of six. And I note that it's going to go where I want. And here is a uh, related to five. So I'm going to get my bracket and I'm going to go down here and get my bracket. And these things are resizable and I can move them all over the place. Um, so if I double click on this and I want to make this bigger or shorter, I can do that. Pretty handy, right? Uh, now I'm going to show an arrow going to my sixth chord. So scroll down here and uh, here I'm going to get my regular arrow. And even the arrows are, uh, if I double click on this, I can resize it. Pretty nice. All right, so now here I have a, a related two and a sub five. So first I have dual function, that's my six minor seven. I know I'm going a little fast here in terms of uh, uh, analysis, but I'm assuming that you can do all that. So I'm gonna go and find my six minor seven. There's my six minor seven chord. And here, sub five, of my five and it doesn't really go to five because it goes to a related two so I have to show oh my goodness I'm deceived a deceptive cadence so I'm gonna click on this and I'll go to my sub five of five which is right here 
and show that it doesn't go to a five chord, but it goes to that root. Uh, so I'm going to have a dotted bracket here and a dotted arrow there. So first I'll click here and I'm going to do my dotted bracket and I go down here and here's my dotted bracket. And then I'm going to uh, uh, click on here and I'm going to show my dotted arrow. And again, I can resize these. I can make them shape any way that I want. Sometimes it's hard to grab, so I'll just grab my, grab this, pull it over. There we go. And you can always go Command Plus and make things a little bigger if you want to look at your page a little bigger. All right, so now I have a, a secondary dominant and a sub five, so I can do both of these. This is not a modal interchange, of course. We know that that's a related to, right? Okay, cool. So we're going to grab our expression here, and we're going to show the, the, the related to here. And we're going to do a, a, a bracket. So here's my bracket. And then I have 5, 7 of 4 and sub 5 of 4. And let's say I'm going to go to both of those, uh, that I'm going to go to my 4 chord. So first I'll do my secondary dominant, 5, 7 of 4. All right, and now I'm going to add my sub 5 of 4 here. So again, we'll click on this and double click here. We'll go through our list and find the sub 5 of 4. Um, and I'm telling you that I am going to go to that F7. So we'll just put this in here, move some stuff around so it looks, you know, legible. And I have to put in my arrows and my dotted arrows. So uh, I'll click here, move down here, and my 5, 7, of 4 is going to go down a perfect fifth to F7. So I'll put my arrow there. And then I'm going to leave room and I'm going to put a dotted arrow for my um, sub 5 of 4. Um, so I'm going to go down here and scroll and hit my dotted arrow and then we'll, we'll show that that's going to move as well. Sometimes it's a little hard to see so we can hit command plus um, and just expand our finale window really easily without changing the layout. So now I have my arrows going and everything is all set in terms of my analysis. Now you're like well what if I don't want to do this on a piano document? What if I have a lead sheet I want to make what if I've already created a document can I use all this and the answer is yes so embedded in this particular file is a library of all the expressions and so if you want to save that library to your desktop you can do that if you don't want to use this document so all you do is you're going to say save library and you check all these things that you want to save about the library some or all of them um, you hit OK and it's going to save it to a place um, that is in the user files inside um, uh, the 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 system file so for uh, uh, application support um, so we're going to call this analysis and then save it and yeah I want to replace the one I already named analysis alright so now uh, let's say I open up a brand new document in Finale. Uh, we're going to open up a default document, really easy document, um, and you're about to do your lead sheet. And we have our expressions, and we're going to take a look and see, oh, where did all those expressions go? These are the default expressions that Finale loads. Um, but I want to load that library that uh, I just put in there. So I'm going to go under File and Load Library. And then I'm going to go and find Analysis. Uh oh, and now it's going to load it. And this takes a while because this is a sort of large library. It has a lot of things embedded in it. So um, we're going to wait for the little spinning pinwheel there to stop spinning. And then when it's finished, all those expressions that I created for you are going to be now embedded in this new document. And you can choose to make this your default or you can just add it when you need it. Maybe you have other settings that you like and you can decide how much you're going to save or only use it in certain times. Now I'm going to click on this and take a look and then here are all the expressions that I gave you, all the Roman numeral stuff. Now they're in a slightly different order, it's messed up. Um, I worked really hard to put it in the right order, put the major ones and then the minors and the sub fives and for whatever reason that I haven't figured out yet, uh, it doesn't keep that. Um, yeah, so it, they're slightly out of, out of kilter, but they're all here. So you can choose to use them. And so that now uh, when you do documents, when you upload them in, um, for teachers, then you can have um, perfectly done analysis um, already embedded. It doesn't play. It just uh, in terms of these, these make no noise, but they work really great. And that when you want to change your layout after you've done analysis, 
then it's still going to be fine. And we can see that all the arrows and everything are still in, uh, connected to each of the cords. We might have to resize things, but everything is looking just really fine in terms of the analysis still being there regardless of how we change our layout. So we can change the measures, I can move a staff, and it all moves with. And that's just really the way we want to do things. Uh, so much better than just drawing on the document because then when you resize and stuff and move measures, then they don't move with. So you can use this or not. It's not required, but I just thought it might be useful. I found it's been useful for me. So I um, uh, hope, hope, hope this helps you. All right. Take care.